Hello and welcome to another episode of Double Barrel Gaming. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about an interview with Xbox Wire editor in chief Will Tuttle that should give Xbox players some confidence going into E3. Because of last week's leak for Microsoft's E3 lineup, there was a tremendous amount of blowback within the Xbox community. It also included plenty of back and forth between fans on whether or not the leak was true or fake. Many YouTubers, including myself, believe that this list is in fact fake. The team at Redmond know exactly how important E3 2018 is for their fans and for the company. I personally have complete confidence not only in Phil Spencer, but the company when it comes to righting the wrongs of the past, and this interview should shed some light on that. This is what Will Tuttle had to say during the interview. There is still plenty to talk about regarding the platform, and that there will be a plethora of trailers and some new major announcements at this year's E3. During the briefing, you'll have a chance to check out everything from in-depth looks at our previously announced games to new trailers for our unannounced titles coming in 2018 and beyond. Now, there's a few things that get me excited about this particular statement. First and foremost, there are going to be games coming out in 2018 that have yet to be announced, which is great. But it's the word beyond that made me think Phil Spencer and company have been hearing what the fans are calling for, and that's a game's roadmap. Being an Xbox first gamer, I have put all of my eggs into one basket concerning E3 2018. Now whether that's good or bad, only time will tell if my faith in Phil Spencer was misguided. I'm not the only YouTuber to say this, but I'm certainly one of the first to suggest that this E3 is a make or break year for Microsoft and the Xbox platform. Many Xbox fans, including myself, have been waiting years for that mic drop moment, and if my hunch is correct, we're going to get it this year in spades. Being that Microsoft is the underdog puts them in a position to shock the industry. I want them to be remembered in this generation as the comeback kids, and I think they have a chance to do it. 2018 started out with a bang with rumors of a perfect dark reboot, Fable 4 that's currently in development, and the return of several OG Xbox franchises like Crimson Skies and Mech Assault. There were also rumors of a reboot to Ninja Gaiden that was an exclusive to the Xbox platform. Two new rumors of games that may be shown at E3 2018 have just popped up, the first one being a Forza Kart Racer that uses all of the platform characters very similar to Mario Kart. And the second rumor is while the Coalition is putting the finishing touches on Gears 5, we could see an XCOM-type Gears title that would expand the franchise in the same way Halo Wars did. All of these rumored games have one major thing in common, and that they're all first-party developed games, something that the platform needs desperately. Now, whether you agree with me or not, Xbox fans want something to cheer about, and I'm right there with them. It's high time that Microsoft pulled back the curtain and let their fans know what was coming down the pipeline. A roadmap would give the fans something called brand confidence, and that has been in short supply since the start of this generation. I'm extremely interested to hear what you have to say. Please leave all opinions in the comments section below. Now for today's community spotlight, and that person is the Graphic God, also known as J-Dubs. If that name sounds familiar, it's because he's the producer of the MNC Morning Show that stars the Crap Gamer and Mooch, and he's also the star of his very own show, Retro Renegades, on YouTube. What makes this a very special spotlight is I've gotten to know Jay on a personal level, and I think of him as a brother. He is personally responsible for helping me get my YouTube channel off the ground floor, and it's something I'll never forget. The Graphic God has produced all of my intros and graphics for my channel, so it's my complete honor to share his gaming origin story with you today as this week's Community Spotlight. During the interview, I asked him several questions, and I found his answers extremely intriguing. When asked what his first gaming experience was, he told me that in the late 70s, his dad showed up to the house with the Coleco Telestar Marksman console. According to Jay, it was a Pong clone with a light gun attachment, and he recalls playing it constantly until it stopped working. Then he cut the cord and used the light gun to play cops and robbers outside with his friends. When asked how long he's been gaming, he tells me that the Telstar Marksman was released in 1978, so he believes that's where it all started for him. 
While speaking with the graphic god, he agrees that it's pretty amazing being in a position to watch gaming grow from the 70s until now. When asked who his favorite gaming character of all time was, he told me this, I've never really had a favorite character, but games I've enjoyed over the years involve ninjas. Everything from Shinobi to Ninja Gaiden, all iterations, and of course the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I've always gravitated towards the ninja genre if there's one in a game. Sonic also has a very special place in my heart as well. When asked what his favorite game of all time, this of course was not a surprise. He tells me that if he had to pick just one, it would have been the Shinobi Arcade Machine. Jay tells me he has awesome memories of feeding quarters into the machine at his local arcade with his friends in the late 80s. Today, you'll see it's his go-to game while streaming. When asked what his favorite gaming console of all time was, he said without a doubt it's the Sega Dreamcast. Playing a superior version of Soul Calibur at home on his TV was beyond amazing. Its game's lineup was unmatched and truthfully, the system had it all. Titles like Shenmue, Dead or Alive 2, Spider-Man, Soul Reaver, NHL, Virtua Tennis, and Power Stone led the charge for that system. When asked what his most treasured gaming moment was of all time, he couldn't pick one so he gave me two. The first was staying up all night playing Fantasy Star on the Sega Master System so him and his friend Frankie could defeat Dark Falls. The second was discovering all of the fatalities in the Mortal Kombat version on the Sega Genesis when he was in college. When they performed one, they all screamed like they had just won the lottery, though the beer that they were chugging certainly helped. When asked what his Game of the Year for 2017 was, this is what he told me. Probably Resident Evil 7. It was the first time he played and finished a Resident Evil game since Code Veronica on the Dreamcast. The new first-person perspective really immersed you in the horrifying yet captivating world of the Baker family. He tells me that Capcom really raised the bar on the survival horror genre. When asked what had him excited for 2018 and beyond, his answer was precise and straight to the point. Being primarily an Xbox guy, he's looking forward to seeing how Microsoft continues to combat the negative persona the media and the uninformed gamers have been pushing. He of course is looking forward to Xbox staples like Gears of War, Halo, and a new Forza. But according to the graphic god, he believes Microsoft will need to pull some magic out of their hat and announce some exciting new IPs that you can't find on other platforms to gain back the trust of its longtime supporters. I hope you found the graphic god's gaming origin story as interesting as I did. J Dubs also does custom gamer picks as well as intros and banners for Twitter. All of his contact information will be in the show notes below. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Double Barrel Gaming. I also hope you enjoyed today's newest entry to the Community Spotlight. If you did, please hit that like button, consider sharing this on social media, and also subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. Have an awesome day.